Welcome to Real Flix Reviews, like a book club. People hate reading. This week, we're doing the movie Whip Lash, made in 2014, and The Punisher, season one, episode seven. This week, we have Jonathan Charney, James Dillers, and Ryan Preston. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have to tell you all good things do come to an end. And unfortunately, this is going to be the last month of Real Flix Reviews. Hold your applause, please. Um, there is there is good news, though. Um, the Mad Trio will be back. Um, Real Flix Reviews might. We're going to be doing a new show sometime the beginning of next year. We haven't really set any dates. So you'll see the Mad Trio of movie reviews just in a different format. Um we will promise that if there's an amazing movie that we, would, we, we do want to see, we will come out with a special episode of Real Flix Reviews. Probably won't be on Star Wars, though, so don't hold your breath. So, with that being said... You don't want them to kill themselves? No, not really. Oh, okay. Um, Whiplash, 2014. A promising young drummer enrolls at a cutthroat music conservatory where his dream of greatness are mentored by instructor who will stop at nothing to realize students' potential. And holy shit, J.K. Simmons plays a dick in this movie. Conservatory. Can you say that? No. Okay. Um, obviously, you've done the, we've done this show for 200 and something episodes. <laughs> oh, come obviously. on, Ryan. You were thinking it too. <laughs> hey, I'm surprised he nailed J.K. Simmons. I'm leaving it alone. <laughs> See, obviously, you know, I, I've had people tell me I've got to be from the South because I can't enunciate correctly. See, you know what? Correctly. I'm going to jump in on this one since both of you only saw clips. Yeah, I sold them out. Um, you know, wow. I got to say with these types of movies, I'm not really into band films or anything like that. So this one. Bullshit. Actually, you love that thing we do. I remember you just raving about it. I've never seen that movie. He's lying, by the way. No, I'm not. I don't even know who the hell's in it. Um, anyways, uh, so going into this one, this one already had like negative points according to me. And when He's I'm racist. when I was done with it, this is a four and a half. And I don't say that lightly. So this movie um, really got compared to like the music version of the Black Swan. That's all the reviews I read about it. Nah, I uh, just Black Swan sucked. Oh, I haven't I haven't seen Black Swan. It's not really my type of movie, but I heard a lot of amazing things about this movie. Um, the most amazing thing is I don't ever remember hearing about this when it came out. Yeah, I didn't hear about it either. Well, Ryan, I'll tell you what I I I had heard about it just because um, I I I am so hesitant to say this shit after seeing this movie, <laughs> and and James will know why. I I'm a drummer. And yes, I meant that as a question. Um, He's questioning his I own ability. I have never had, oh my God, I've never had an ounce of this dude's talent or oh, no. drive. Yeah. You know, um, you didn't have to agree with me that quickly, James. Thank you. <laughs> but no, no, no. James, James has seen me probably, maybe not at my technical best, but definitely at my fastest. Nowhere even close. To, to, to how quick this dude's hands move. No you know? shit. Well, I've, but um, but I, I've had friends bring it up to me like, oh, dude, you got to see this movie. You got to see this movie. You got to see this movie. And I, and I figured this was the good enough excuse to force myself to watch it. I couldn't fucking believe how good of a movie this was. So I Like it was almost like jaw at the floor like, oh, shit. Oh, I, shit. I've, yeah. I've actually had the pleasure of uh, at least part-time, partly working with a professional studio grade slash touring uh drummer um so i think that's that the level that guy was at i can totally believe how fast he was because this particular guy i'm talking about was an amazing drummer i mean it was it was almost oh, sad sure. how amazing uh, how poorly everybody else was compared to him um yeah i'm just i i've i've definitely seen amazing <clears throat> drummers but let me tell you from personal experience there is a, a giant chasm Okay, from like I'm 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 actually a pretty decent drummer, you know. So he's like, like all, all said and done, I can I can I can definitely hold a beat. I can play you, can't you know semi complicated things. I cannot do four hundred times. You're that better is, off getting the, an old eight hundred eight. I'm telling you the the amount of people that that are where I'm at to where that kid and that level is at. It goes from like you know probably hundreds of thousands to like. 20 
30, 50. Yeah. You know, like not very many people are 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 on that that kind of level. Maybe not. Maybe more. So the funniest thing is, I I doubt there's even touring musicians that may, may be at that level. And 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 before everybody like yells at me, if you look at some of the musicians, especially drummers throughout the the ages, you know, not everybody's like a Tommy Lee or other type of drummers. So. I, I do think, and well, and not everything. Not everything is just about speed. What 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 jazz from do what jazz does in general is it kind of takes that speed, mixes it with the this like technical masterpiece, yeah. and makes you do both of these things at once. I mean, yes, there's some amazing drummers out there. I'm sure we will we get a list of a, of, of a thousand, but it, it's just to get to that level requires i mean just so much more dedication so so i recognize right off the bat like oh shit this is not easy so there's there there is something that i didn't know i'm a huge jazz fan and i've never really looked at the far as the technical aspects about it i saw an interview on jimmy fallon with this guy and he was talking about you know he's used to a normal drumming where you just hold a stick standard and he was saying the problem with jazz drumming is you don't hold it normal is you would doing everything else so he said there's so much more technical difference between you know being like a rock and roll drummer and a jazz drummer yeah. and so that was right the, it's, it's it's the difference it's called uh, matches when you hold it you know like a like a rock and roll drummer uh traditional is you know well at least on a kit traditional is you know laid across the, the palm of your hand essentially between your you know uh, middle and and ring finger yeah so uh in that final scene where he's doing whiplash by himself and he's leading the band um there's a scene there's a section where they cut away from miles teller and they just focused in on on the drums and the sticks moving and i was Looking at that and just the speed that he's hitting, how accurate and on time and everything is on it, I was sitting there and I'm like, I wonder who they picked to be doing that scene. It was him. It was actually Miles Teller. Yeah. That's was, the thing that just blew me yeah. away. He's a self-taught that, yeah, drummer. he is. And he's amazing, actually. I'm surprised so, that he's actually doing this instead of actually playing music. So that was the other part of the interview. He talked about growing up, he's always played instruments. Uh, he said before this, he was playing piano and he just wanted a... Uh, a drum kit, and he said he didn't take any lessons. So he just picked it up. Yeah, like which is amazing to me. Um, now the other thing I want to pick up on this movie because one of the things that I think a lot of people are going to think is an exaggeration is how J.K. Simmons <laughs> actually put this together as playing this guy Teller. There are people like that. People, I mean, they actually sure. do live in the entertainment and um, the upper class hospitality industries. Where it's, they're like that. They want to push you to the next level. They want to do that. I've had chefs in my face screaming, cussing me out, throwing tantrums and throwing shit. They'll get physical with you too. It happens. So sure. I think. Yeah. My, I th- I'll tell you what, my. Go on. Oh, no, I was going to say my favorite scene was was the uh, am I am I dragging or am I rushing? Yeah. I, I, I mean, he's, he's slapping him in the face off tempo on the on the on the four and and just the 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 intensity of that was just unbelievable i love the scene where he tackles jk simmons he actually broke some ribs yeah (laughs) in in real life yeah i realize yeah jk simmons actually got two broken ribs from that scene and uh, why didn't they bring continued they should have brought a wrestler on board would have told him how to take that i'm I'm actually i'm actually surprised to hear that he was injured i mean he looks like he spent his life in the weight room before this movie oh yeah yeah he's he's yeah jk simmons was jacked I yeah, think he he's was. even more jacked for, uh, was it Spider-Man? He played another role recently where he was taking an oh. Instagram photo of him. He was, for his age, he's huge. Yeah. Um, anyways, but yeah. He but yeah, the, the relationship the relationship they had was was uh, r- remarkable. I mean, what a, I, I was such a fan of this freaking movie, man. Holy shit. See, I've never had a relationship that, that with a teacher where I hated him and loved him. And I just, that was, it was a really cool relationship. And this movie, I think only had a $3 million budget. Like yeah. 3 and million, they shot million. it. Uh, it was shot in 19 days. Damn. That was fast. And it was edit, amazing. shot, edited and cut 
for the Sundance Film Awards within ten weeks. So that's why I didn't I I didn't hear about that. I don't generally yeah, it, follow it was Sundance. It, it was let me let me let me fast. bring up another point that that I want to make sure everyone is aware is not an exaggeration. His hands bleeding all over that kit. Oh yeah, that was real too. He got the calluses. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was real because if you're telling me they shot that shit in 19 days. I, I'll bet you the look on his face and the sweat porn. I mean, you didn't have to do any makeup for that movie. Yeah, um, the final song was nine minutes long. He drummed for nine minutes, complete at that at, speed. At that speed, and they cut it down for the film for five minutes, but it was a nine-minute thing. That's insane. See, I, I yeah, that's 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 unbelievable. I love movies with, with about bands when you actually get to see the the people actually doing it. Yeah. I, I literally, when I saw that final section, I was sitting there and I'm like, no, that, that actor cannot be playing that fast. It, I just, well, wasn't completely believing that he what, actually it, did that. It, but, initially I was, um, but before I found out that that was him playing also initially before even starting it, I was like, okay, well the, the only standard I really have for this movie is, somebody better actually be playing those drums yeah. because in a movie, if you, you know, most of the time when you see a band, the, the guy is not hitting the drums in time with what's going on. And it's, you know, anybody who's a musician and watches a musician on TV, fake something, it's just immediately noticeable. So that was the only real standard. And especially with drums, when it's a drum centric movie, you, it's almost impossible to fake it. But then he's playing stuff that I'm just like, no way is this yeah. i mean either this actor is that good or they've done some remarkable cgi and 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 timing and cut this thing and like i was thinking like okay this must have been like a like a three month shoot and you're filming in like 10 second increments you know yeah. but then they landed these long shots on this kid and i'm just like no there's no way to fake that yeah there's I, I, no way to do that i do wonder how long it took the uh, the production to find him because you're looking for a very odd skill set. I'm looking for a really good actor who has the ability of a, a at least you know a professional drummer. I don't know. I looked up this director and he wrote the movie as a short in 2014 and then or uh, 2013 and then put this film the full film out the next year. So he found the guy somewhere there and I mean um, I've got like over 20 years experience as a sound man i've worked with drummers they're a pain in the ass to control but to see this type of thing where you have a drummer that i I mean i don't think people out there really understand that drummers are human metronomes they're human musical metronomes they keep time and they make music with the cymbals and the toms and everything but the snare the kick that is keeping time, people. So but, they're doing that and then making all these other shit around it. And I mean, just it's amazing to see something like this where you have a full band being conducted with the speeds that he was pushing the drummers to control. By the way, if you crazy. guys if you guys want to see what a lot of people call one of the best drummers of all time, look up a gentleman by the name of Buddy Rich. Um You'll yeah, see he what was I mean. referenced in the movie. Yeah, he um, damn, just just watch him. I won't spoil anything, but it's it's art in motion. W- yeah. w- w- won't spoil anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anybody. <laughs> to see, what are you going to have them do? Like it? put up YouTube clips of it? it yeah, <laughs> I don't want people. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. because he's going to spoil it. Go ahead and spoil it, John. Well, I mean, yeah, there's spoil like, spoiler alert, everybody. <laughs> well, a quality, a, mu- a high level musician. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to describe, and, and describing so I think is not only is the it, detriment it to the person. It, yeah, and and somebody of that quality, you can't, you know, somebody like him does not come along all that often. I'd say the same well, thing me, about the Beatles. It, and let me put it this way: the recognition as a drummer is a very rare thing. You know, people can name can definitely count on one hand the amount of drummers that they're aware of. I mean, yeah. it really, I don't even think they'd need the whole hand. I mean, it, 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 drummers are not typically famous for, like James said, they're typically there to keep time, not to show off. Now, a drummer by nature is a show-off artist. 
and he's looking for any excuse to hit things like a monkey with a sex. Yeah. By the way, the drummer uh, so is like a wind-up finding monkey. A I disciplined, like yeah, yeah. Finding a disciplined drummer, I know I love that reference too, um, is a really, really difficult thing. You know, they're constantly just kind of in their own little head, in their own little world, ripping on dumb shit. Um, See, but sorry my, about that, by the way. The, the drummers are always like band-wise. They're always my favorite people to watch. Just because you can tell if if the band's having fun or not solely based on the drummer. Because um, you can tell if the drummer misses something, you can tell like if he fucks up the rest of the band. So I've always enjoyed uh Oh, yeah. The, the, the amount of times the, the pianist used to look at me kind of off, out of the side of her eye and just kind of like move her hand from, from high to low, like slow the fuck down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, unfortunately, as, as James narked us out, we didn't get to see a chance to see it. I have an excuse. I have a the very young film. kid. And let's just say watching a movie and trying to corral a child is damn near impossible. And a salute to those who somehow have the ability you, to do you that. You just have them sit on your lap while J.K. Simmons is sitting there cussing people out and slapping them. Yeah, just just what I want is him to start repeating some of that <laughs> language. Um, so Did I, I say I, play I it like a wind-up monkey? Um... So Ryan's definitely going to see it. It's on my list of movies to see. And at this point, that list is getting. Yeah, Ryan's probably going to watch this right after we finish. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can. Yeah, catch, yeah, basically. You can catch us on for now on, on uh, Facebook.com slash Real Flicks Reviews and iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, and more. So th- this week's TV show is The Punisher, Season 1, Episode 7. James saw it. He liked it. And so we're going to. We're going to, what? I was going to switch to movie news just to screw with you, but go okay. ahead. You can switch to movie news. I don't care. Um, if you haven't seen The Punisher, yeah, I watch it. I liked it. It was good. Watch The Punisher. Yeah. yeah that's all we really, we really have to say. I mean, I picked this one just because there was some weird shit going on, but that's So about it. I am happy. So I looked into it a little bit. I'm happy that um, the, the uh, what's the devil isn't in it? The devil? Daredevil? I, Daredevil. Thank you. I'm really tired. I'm happy Daredevil's not in it. Why? I um, was, I was, I'll tell you what, I was actually kind of surprised, but I was happy with that also. I, because I my, mean, here's, are you my, looking for crossovers? Are you well, my not thought, wanting crossovers? I mean, not right going? away because well, my, that, I, that's, that's kind of where I was going with it. Yeah. Cause my thought is you got to have this character stand on own. Granted he can, but there's been so many bad Punisher movies. That I I wanted to see. Wait, the, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's back that up. Uh, by the way you phrase that, is there a good Punisher movie? No. Okay. I just I like put that one of there. the bad Punisher movies, but it is not a good movie. And yeah. Dolphy, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Um, so I I really thought the only way this is going to succeed at all is have them stand by itself. And I've heard nothing but rave reviews about this uh, from everybody I know who's seen it. And I was just afraid if you had the daredevil in it, you could make it either campy or it'd become more about the devil. And I, I really well, wanted to have it more about. I'm just glad that he wasn't part of Marvel's Defenders because that shit sucked. Was he ever? No, but I'm just glad that he yeah, didn't try he, to well, throw that, him in that. That's the thing is, is mostly, mostly the Punisher is is a, is a very standalone character, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty much on the same boat as as, as John. It, it just in as much as I, I figured it was only going to go one of two ways. Either you bring the you bring Daredevil in for like a scene where he's like, what, give him a thumbs up and hey, good job, or hey, calm down, and it's a throwaway scene, or he's in the entire show. And I didn't want him to be in the entire show. I wanted it to be Frank Castle's story, which they were absolutely brilliant about so well, what what i was hoping for if because i haven't seen any of it i'm hoping for like the end you see the outline of daredevil that's it like right as a closing credit hit and then that's what i wanted more than anything i don't want to see his face i don't want to hear him talk i want to see an outline and i would be happy as far as i'm concerned they already did the crossover with daredevil oh there'll be more no yeah they already did it no there'll be more no they already did it that's cute but they'll Isn't do it, it again. Are they going to do Frankencastle? Maybe. Which is a comic book. If you people um, don't know. The only thing, will it be on Netflix? I hope so. 
Um, screw you, Disney. Yeah, well, that's that's obviously still kind of remains to be seen with the yeah. uh, <clears throat> the Disney Marvel merger with the fascist. Well, the question the, the question is really is how much is Netflix fronting for this? Because if Netflix is paying uh-huh. for it and Disney is just the rights well, holder, then that would be a little bit they more difficult. probably are. Yeah, I would imagine that they're just licensing the characters. Like, hey, listen, we we just we're, we're gonna have exclusive rights to these particular characters. You guys can fuck off with your other things. See, I see that's the question. I would be surprised because rumor has it Disney is gonna start spending a lot of money and trying to get Marvel's um, rights back because Marvel sold a lot of their rights. Um, so the question Which would I be, don't was understand why? What, I mean, well, Marvel was failing. I know, but you got that much money going in a bunch of different anyway. No, 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 no. But before this, Marvel was failing, like like belly up. How do you think Disney bought them? Rape. Hmm. It is the mouse. And they are fascist. Um. So on a little bit of TV news, uh, movie news, I did hear something that has me very intrigued. Uh, Tarantino <laughs> is going to be involved in Star Trek. Somehow, I guess he sold this uh, Paramount and an idea, and I guess Paramount is gonna going a bunch of writers and putting a bunch of people in a room to, to see Tarantino's idea. That has me curious. Um, Star Trek is well, a violent is not Tarantino's level of violence, so I'm really curious to see if a they make t- the Star Trek universe Tarantino violent, or if Tarantino can control his level of bloodshed. Um, they they absolutely <laughs> they absolutely won't make it Tarantino violent. It, it doesn't need to be, but we all know that Tarantino as a fan is the best Tarantino there is. Oh hell yeah! You know, like him, him as a fan of a particular genre or 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 series or something. That's that's going to be him at his best when he's because because he knows what what's what works for for those things. He's you know? basically a movie uh, savant. Basically, yeah. Um, because this, I mean, I consider some myself a movie geek, but if you listen to any of the interviews, the guy's bringing out references that that are not that are not only obscure but they're old. Um, yeah, I, he is he is an absolute encyclopedia. But so, he does things he does things justice when he does a kung fu movie. He he nails it when he does the western. He nails it when he does a World War Two. It's like holy shit, the best World War Two movie ever. You know, if, if he wants to do Star Trek or he has a particular idea that he's going to produce, because I mean, you know, Tarantino's produced a lot of things that he hasn't that he hasn't been directly involved in as a as a director I, or I will, a writer. I will say uh, though that everything Tarantino's involved in, he's still pardon the expression, still able to put his stank on it. So you can or you can tell that his flair is involved in it, but it's always like varying degrees of like a Tarantino movie. Like if you look at Reservoir Dogs and Glorious Bastards, full fledged Tarantino. But if you see like Sin City where he is involved in, you can still see his influence or, um, in there. Well, but even in the stuff that he's produced with like Rodriguez, I mean, it's just things that That's people okay, people yeah. that he respects, yeah. you know, and, and says like, "Hey, listen, I, I this I'm I'm kind of signing off on on this being an amazing idea, kind of giving a stamp of approval to the general public, if you will." You know? Well, I mean, if you look at Four Rooms, which four different stories by four different directors, you can definitely tell which one was Tarantino's. Not only because he was in it, well, but... yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but because of what it was and how much dialogue and the dialogue motivated scene. I actually yeah, to be think... fair, he is the only person that would ever hire himself as an actor. Yes. Yeah, true. Except for the person in Golden Girls. I, I um, mean, why does he have to be Mr. Brown? I mean, that's like Mr. Shit. Why does he get to be Mr. White? Can it be Mr. Black? Or Mr. Purple? I'll be uh... okay with being Mr. Purple. <laughs> I'm going to steal that box set, by the way, from you. So no, you're point. not. I, I, he is a Mr. Pink box set I've wanted forever because I can't find one. Um, the Gambit movie looks to be starting production in early 2018. This is either going to suck out loud or be marginal at best. I have not been I, too happy with it. Uh, most X-Men movies, I have minus not, the last trilogy. I have not been happy with any of the tries at Gambit so far. Um. There's yeah, only been one and, try. And I don't know if it really deserves its own movie. 
The True. only one I think of what James has been saying all these years, it was the thieves and the assassins. That's the only story that I know of Gambit that I actually think that would be right, would be good. The only question is, would they be able to give it the atmosphere and the actual story to not make it, um, well, X-Men Origins Wolverine? Because that movie just <clears throat> sucked. Well, one would hope they've, they've learned their lessons a little bit. From okay, the, so... From the I hey, doubt you guys it. remember the um, the pick your own story teen books that came out mid nineties or early nineties, late eighties, I think. The Goosebumps one. Oh well, it's the ones that are like pick your own story. Yeah, you know? I remember them. And then somehow I just so shrank. Netflix has started doing that with kids shows. <laughs> There's a few different kids shows that um, they have like a little thing, and you can actually take the remote and pick. You know which one you want to go with. Well, they have you like fast forward for five minutes, or I uh, know it just kind of like skips you around a little bit. Anyways, interesting. Um, they're debating and they're teasing <clears throat> doing it for adult shows. Why? I don't give a crap. But no, here's the thing: it, can it be like the Final Destination, where allegedly you can choose if people die? I'll totally do that, just as long as you have the actor I, I, really I was, don't like. I, I, was, uh, yeah. I was literally imagining the nine-year-old James. Sitting there wondering where the option to kill everybody in the show is. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask his mom like, about that. <laughs> <laughs> in those books, I just read it straight through. I didn't give a shit. I just read that so like, like, front to end. I didn't so care. So it's like watching the movie Clue. Um, Basically. But so, I wouldn't, I'm not interested in doing that to a show. Or reading a Tarantino movie. I would be down to see how it's done. I don't know if I'd be interested in it, but on the technical level, I'm curious. And kind of a sad news... Um, Gomer Pyle died at yeah. 87 years old. Um, Fantastic I mean, he's singer. A name. Amazing singer, guys. If I you know he has a real name. Him J- Jim, Jim Neighbors. Thank yeah. you. I was just Jim about Neighbors. to say John yeah. Neighbors. Just, um, his name. I, I was just going to say Jim that. Neighbors. I was going to tell them to Google Jim Neighbors to um, listen to him sing. I, I don't, I'm really bummed. Saying, you know, Gomer Pyle died. That's fucking terrible. In all honesty, more people, Pyle. more people know him as Gomer Pyle than they do his actual name. True. So saying, you I'm know, just saying you could have said, Hey, maybe, you know, Jim neighbors died. You might know him as Gomer Pyle. <laughs> this is true, but I didn't have his name in front of me. I had Gomer Pyle because apparently all the news stories didn't put his real name on it. That yeah, I had. that was the thing that could have pissed me off. Um, the headline wasn't Jim Neighbors dies. It was Gomer Pyle. Yeah, and I think I, I think I saw one that said Shazam, Gomer Pyle died. It's like, oh, shit, dude, really? Dude, <laughs> what the awful. hell? Um, God. Uh, so I, I grew up at, uh, hopefully like anybody in our age, watching, you know, reruns of... The Andy Griffith show. So I was really bummed that he died. I this is one of the few actors that I've never heard anything bad at all. Um, which apparently in Hollywood is very rare, especially if you know you pay attention to the Weinstein guy. So would you guys listen to a well, Hugh Jackman? They, it was it happened back in the day. Now they just film everything. <laughs> True. True. Would you guys actually listen to a Hugh Jackman as Wolverine podcast? Is it him doing the podcast as Wolverine? I would no, totally I doubt that it's actually Hugh Jackman, but Marvel is launching a Wolverine podcast next year. So here's here's kind of my thought about it. If it's in character, because I would totally listen to somebody doing Wolverine is and and like talking about modern day stuff would be hilarious, especially if it came to to like politics. Like, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I don't know what, what direction they're, they're planning on going with this, but I've, um, uh, on a couple of occasions, seen some podcasts come out where it's actually like old school radio theater, you I know, would love where, that. where it's <clears throat> full yard and sound effects. Well, obviously that's full yard. Um, <laughs> the... All the, all the little things that used to be in the, the old school, you know, radio theater. Um, if they did something like that in a, in a comic book range, you know, and not like a book on tape, you know, like like complete with the, 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 the footsteps and the breathing of so, the characters and all of that and the different characters. So is, yeah, is, that could be interesting. Well, is the guy, since I'm... I could totally be into that. Since I'm, I'm a huge fan of old-time radio... I've been listening to it for decades. 
Sorry, I'm trying to find the story. I lost <clears throat> um, it. I would love it. I used to love all the old Ray Bradbury shit when I was a kid. Oh, um, because there's there's amazing shows like uh, I've talked about Dragnet, um, the radio show. There's X minus one. There's Fibber McGee and Molly. There's an amazing amount of 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 old content out there. And if you take a look, the difference between, like Ryan said, an audiobook and old-time radio is you hear footsteps, doors shutting, It pretty much. Matter of fact, uh, the Dragnet was actually a simulcast for a period of time, I don't know the length, between being actually live action and audio. It was literally the same thing, but one actually had video attached. Um, I, yeah, and, and it's a really cool medium that people have sort of forgotten about, which I hope you know, since podcasts have kind of come back, well, that's kind of what start I, taking this new media, well, and, you know, was, not necessarily the old stories, but these new good ones, and and you know, do them, do them like that. And there's there's just a little bit of a, a, a sidebar. If you ever watched the 1960s version of Dragnet, most of the like the the side characters are actually old time radio actors. And I heard the difference between actors and old-time radio actors is apparently most of the old-time radio actors were able to read the script once and just repeat. Hmm. I thought it was um, amazing. So yeah. this is actually what they're actually quoted as, first ever scripted podcast. So it does kind of sound like it's going to be some type of storyline-based podcast. So here's the thing I have with it. Well, there, look, or, that's, there, that's there, really good because if it was the, uh, hey, we're talking – Talking Wolverine, like fucking Chris Hardwick style, yep. you know, the, the talking everything nowadays. Like, man, do we really need one dedicated to Wolverine? So here's the issue. That's kind of what I was thinking. Here's the issue I have. There's already scripted. I want to know exactly what the main scripted because there's already podcasts that are stories. Are you talking about full, uh, like we were talking about, like old time radio or it's just stories? Because just by saying scripted, I call bullshit because there's already scripted podcasts. So, well, I'm thinking. I think they're actually doing what I was kind of describing. Yeah, I that's would. What it sounds I, like. I I would love it. I'd actually love if they did a half hour story every week. I I would subscribe right now. Give me the fucking button. That's what I'm thinking. It's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm totally in. That that sounds like a great idea. Um, but on the other hand, there's two questions that come in mind. What's the audience they're aiming for? Are they aiming for kids, uh, you know, like the 30 to something, eight, like adults? Because if it's for kids, well, it'll be entertaining. I don't know if I like it. If it's more like the Marvel movies, there's a better chance I think it'll quality versus, hey, Wolverine, what are we going to do today? I don't know, you know, type of thing. Right. No, I mean, yeah, I, I think they're, they're definitely going with, with the latter. Uh, I think they're going with the latter. Why, why, why would you limit style. yourself to kids? I, I don't know. I So, like... Yeah, that's true. I don't know, because it's Marvel, and I think Marvel has to toe a line, which I think Deadpool kind of no, way stepped over. No, they don't. No, they, 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 they've gotten rid of towing a line. I'm, I'm, now, it's about money. <laughs> well, I'm happy. I'm actually happy with, with that. Because um, as a parent, I actually know what the movies are about, unlike the guy who took a six-year-old to Deadpool. <laughs> What's wrong with Deadpool? I think yeah, was, no, if you, if you took your six-year-old to Deadpool, you're an idiot. And you no, he's trying to it. create a, a, a hit girl, man. <laughs> or, or permanently yeah, scar his mean, child. Or you do exactly what you're doing, and I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> so next week um, is kind of it's the the bonanza, the, 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 the end of Real Flicks Reviews for now. Um, we've decided... No format. We're literally just going to do whatever we want. So we picked a movie that was in theaters. It's no longer in theaters for probably a year. We're going to pick the latest Kingsman movie. Was it Kingsman, the Golden Golden Circle, Circle or something like that? Golden Circle, Correct. Golden Watch, Golden Shower. It's one of those. Do you have a TV show? Yes. Uh, the Mist, and we're doing episode seven again. So Cool. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. As always, there's Jonathan Charney, James Stevens. Ryan Blackglove Preston, and as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye.